Hey guys, welcome to the second half of our list view exercise. If you have watched the previous video, we were basically creating a list view, like a table, and we were able to add data in it. So each time we basically fill the list view in here, we were able to uh, insert records into the list view itself. So we're gonna continue now in this exercise and we're gonna basically modify this list view even further. We'll be able to select records and basically uh, transfer them into uh, another interface such as this one. So we'll be able to update them and finally we'll be able to delete them. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm gonna close this one and rerun it again just to show you that each time we do this, the records that you do not indicate will not be placed there. So this data that you add is not actually a permanent because as I close it, all the data here will be gone. Now that we understand this, we go to the form one and we're gonna create a similar interface such as the one like the list view. This will allow us to basically create a update interface. So I'm just gonna come down here with this uh, group box, put it over there and name it as update list view. The big difference between uh, the add and the update is in the update we'll show the ID. Will not only show name and surname, but we will also show the ID. And we will also return reports as they place in there. So whenever the user selects a, a record, they will actually be displayed in here. So I'm going to copy paste this part, just put it all up there. Maybe move this a little bit. And what I'm going to do in here is that I'm going to put ID. Let's find the text property and I'm just going to name this as ID. And for the text part, I will come down and name this as TXT ID. Hmm. And I will also make this enabled false because I don't want the user to actually go and modify this but rather I want to do it myself at the back so what I need to do is to make sure that this is not enabled so I'm gonna by default it was true I'm just gonna make it false by doing so you'll see that the color of it is gonna change it's gonna be a little bit different and the user won't be able to modify it. We also need to give names to our text fields so this is going to be text update name and this is going to be text update surname. Now that we have done this we can put can basically expand this a little bit and we can update this update so this is update this is that we need to also make sure that the button names are matching button update so so far I have button update I have txt update surname I have txt update name and I also have an ID. We will also do a delete button so you can simply copy paste this and we can name this as button delete and we can put it as delete from list. So basically this is the interface that I'm gonna use you can move it around as you like or you can simply keep it there it's up to you how you want to design it you can even put it up there just next to it so that they look like uh, one another and you can expand this one so that you can see more records should you want to 
now that I designed my interface what I want to do is as the recourse are being selected I basically want to transfer them here so you see now the ID I cannot modify it while I can for the name and surname but what is most important is I have to somehow basically when I click in here somehow transfer the recourse there so that I'll be able to modify them so I'm gonna go there and maybe I should expand these buttons it looks better now so that they are all at the same time uh, at the same size it is very important to keep a consistent style you see it's it's important to keep this uh, one style and follow the same format uh, same font in your applications because it will make it more professional looking now that we have uh, done the basic parts for the user interface I will need to somehow create a function that will allow me to uh, transfer the records as they are selected from here into the update part to do that I'm just gonna cut double click on the list view and it will create something called selected selected index change and this will allow me to basically transfer these values so each time these are selected I will modify the state of the data that I want to transfer such as txt ID dot text will be the list view's focus item. So I'm going to select my list view focus item and I will transfer it to the uh, field. So it's going to be my list view called focus item and the focus item that I have will have a sub item and that should be zero because that is the one, the first one on the list. So it's going to be the zero. And I will have to obviously type this text here to make sure that the text is matching the text of the text ID. And we'll do the same thing for the others. So my list will focus item sub item one will be the name and sub item two will be the surname. So we're gonna say something like tech txt update surname or was it surname update? Let's go and check it because I don't remember. This one was txt update name. So it should be txt update name dot text. And that will be minus with focus item sub items. That will be one dot same is gonna happen just gonna copy paste this for the surname so instead of update name I'm gonna type surname and instead of one I'm gonna type two this will allow the records as I click them to be transferred into the update fields and from there I'll be able to either update or delete them so let me just run this thing so as I click on the recourse now, you'll see that they are transferred in here into the update list view. So Anita Honda, you see ID3, John and me, they are all there. Now using this interface, we'll be able to do the update and delete. So let's just call it update and delete from this view. Instead of just update, I'm just going to call it update and delete. So we are able to basically select the records and now we can transfer them to the text fields. What do we do next? Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take now as the user interacts with the records I'm going to use the ID to update the records. I'm going to say something like when this ID is there I'm going to subtract it from 1 because you know that the third number in the list is actually the second number 
and you know the second one is the first and you know the first one is zero so it works like an array logic first item is item zero second item is item one and third item is actually item two so it's always going to be minus one and when i get that now i'll be able to basically uh, update that specific sub item in the items into the one that is changed so I'm gonna keep it like that so let's just go back to the design double click on the update now that I have this I can define an integer value I'm just gonna call it ID and this integer value will be the txt ID dot text I will however have to convert this into some kind of integer so I'm going to put it integer dot parse. It is suggested that you put it inside a try and catch to make sure that there are no exceptions so that if there is an exception you can handle it but for now because I assume you know how to do try and catch I'm not going to do that. The index value that I'm going to use is actually id minus 1 and that is only because of the fact that it follows uh, like an array structure remember that I told you that the first item is actually item 0 and the second one is item 1 and so forth yeah that is the logic of the items inside the list wheel so we're gonna follow the array like structure to do the update I'm gonna type my list wheel dot items and I'm gonna put the index value here once we have put the index value, we're going to select the sub item. Now, I'm, I am never going to update the ID because that's how I differentiate the records. So the first sub item that I'm going to update is not going to be 0 because 0 refers to the ID. It's going to be 1. So I can update the name and the surname, but not the ID. Because ID is a unique identifier that I'm going to use to identify these records. So whatever you type inside text update name will be placed in here. And we're going to copy paste this. Whatever you type in the second sub item will be whatever you type in the third. And this will ensure that the update is done. So let's try if our logic works. First we parse the text ID which is inside the update. Uh, group box then we've subtracted minus one then using the my list uh, wheel items I selected name first initialize it to whatever name you typed and did the same thing for sub item 2 which is the surname and initialize it to the text update surname so I'm gonna come in here run the application and I'm gonna click on the third record and I'm actually going to change it to my name and my surname. Using the update button now, you'll see that it will update the record. Now you can see Anita is no longer and it is me there. I can also change it back if I want to. I can make it Anita. And I'm just going to type Honda here. And the third record is already selected. I'm gonna oops, I'm gonna select it one more time. Anita and change back. You can click on John Brown and make this be update and it changed. So that is how you do the update operation just by clicking on one of the records so that you can select one of them and update it. I can select my name and surname. That is the update part. Now we only have the delete part. So we can go into here, make sure to name your button. So this was what button delete. So I'm gonna come in there, and double click on the delete part. Now in the delete part, we're gonna follow up the same logic. So we will still need to click on the component uh, before we select it. We'll still use the ID and the ID will be minus one. But this time we're not going to change anything. We're simply going to remove it. So I'm going to put my list view dot items 
and the index value of the item, whatever item you selected, and I will completely remove it. So I'm going to put remove there, making sure that this item does not exist. So I'm going to run this application. You see Anita, if I don't want it, I can press on delete and it's gone. I can press on John and it's gone. It is suggested that you put a message box before you really remove the item. So it is possible that you can create a message box here. Show and let's ask the user. Do you want using the name and the surname should you want to it's completely up to you how you want to deal with this and and we can use the yes and no buttons should you want to or ok and cancel and also a sign of warning Once you have done it, I'm just going to push enter to show them in the in a better way to present it. So do you want to really delete this? So I'm going to put an if statement at the beginning. And I'm going to say if the dialog result is yes, which means the user actually clicked on the yes option, make sure that it's deleted. If it is no, do nothing. So that if the user wants to, you know, keep the record, they don't have to uh, delete it. So I'm gonna run this application now. Now we have Anita pressing on delete. Now it says, do you want to delete this record? I'm gonna click on no, and it doesn't delete it. So I'm gonna click on Anita again, delete from this record, and I'm gonna click on yes, and Anita is gone. I'm going to do the same thing for John, pressing on delete, no, delete, yes, and it's gone. I'm going to click on my name and press on this and make my letter initials capital, update and it does the capital. So basically uh, every functionality in here is satisfied. We have done the delete we have done the update we have done the selection and we have done the addition in the previous video you can show the addition one more time should you want to you can just come in here type mic and we can add this to the list and it will be placed there as the port id so basically all these functionalities that you use with a uh, list view as a table are done in here. Adding, updating, deleting and finally showing. I hope you guys find this video useful. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take good care.